So hi guys, I'm Mr Lodge, I'm the head of drama here at Harrow High School. I've got three of the best drama students here to show you a little bit of what we might be doing in drama next year. This is Alex. Hi. Camille. Hi. And this is Morgan. Hi. We're going to be looking today at how to do action narration on a spooky story about a place called Darkwood Manor. So, Darkwood Manor. Darkwood Manor. If I was to say to you, I will give you one thousand pounds to spend the night alone in a room in a place called Darkwood Manor. What would you think is going on? mansion would have belonged to a mad scientist who lived there many many years ago and they obviously did experiments in their lab and then all of a sudden one night they did something that was supposed to happen and then all of a sudden they just disappeared and the man is left standing yep still standing everything's fine but the scientist is gone i wonder scientist. what the experiment was or what's actually left behind because there's going to be loads of rumors left i was kind of thinking the same some kind of Haunted mansion, abandoned by an old man, psychic help, I see psychic help. What were you thinking, Morgan? I would think, like, who's asking for us to go in there um, with the £1,000? And if it's some sort of social experiment um, to see if it goes right or wrong, and then, like, show it to, like, everyone else, like, the world. Oh, so a bit like um, Big Brother type. Mm. Ah, okay. I like that. That's a really cool idea. What were you thinking along the lines of Camille? I was thinking, thinking like it was a place of an old woman who didn't really like people and would sit in like one room but ended up dying one day and would haunt that house forever. So a little haunted house idea. It definitely sounds like it's isolated and nobody goes there. It sounds mysterious. So what we're working with here is kind of mystery slash ghost story slash social experiment. Yeah. So what we're going to be looking at now is some narration about how how we're going to get into the manor and how we're going to create that suspense. Okay guys? Yeah. Cool. So this is Miss Janesta, she's the other drama teacher here and uh, you might end up getting me, you might end up getting her, you might end up getting both or group. And, and Camille and Alex are going to watch us play word association with adjectives that might describe the footpath that leads up to Darkwood Manor. So I'm going to start with winding. Creepy. Shadowy. Overgrown. Damp. Uneven. Frightening. Creepy. So we've got all of those words now. Now what I'm going to ask is Alex and Camille to come and you're going to stand and you're going to look along this footpath. What you're going to do whilst I narrate, and Miss G is going to do the same, is you're going to mime walking down this footpath. So it could be a little bit that you're pretending to walk, because we've only got this much space, we have to cheat the space a little bit. It could be that you've got a torch in your hand. Let's just go for a little walk now down the footpath. And think about your focus. Where are you looking? And as I introduce those adjectives, I'm going to throw in a few nouns. So we might be walking along a winding footpath. So, as he, as he or I walked along the winding footpath, I kept hesitating. Every time I felt a twig snap under my foot, looking down, shining my torch to see what it might be. I kept going, making progress slowly, all too aware that ahead of me somewhere was the dark, looming face of the miserable house. Suddenly a branch snapped. I could feel my heart beating in my mouth. I was breathless. I stepped to the left, looking down to my right. I could have sworn it was a snake. And then the wind, the sinister, howling wind. It 
was some time before I reached the door, sensing it before I saw it, tall, at least nine feet, towering above my head, with windows looking like eyes that were frowning at me. So, I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you can see how you can have a go with one person narrating and another person doing the action. Here's what we can do if there are two people. You'll notice Miss G and I are a good two metres apart, keeping with the times, and uh, what we're going to do is a thing called split staging, uh, whilst we're passing our narration backwards and forwards to each other in a kind of tag team narration. I'm in one location, so I'm in, I've decided, in a bedroom inside Darkwood Manor. Obviously lonely and scared. Where are you, Miss G? I'm going to be outside the manor, so I would have just walked down the path and I would have just arrived and seen this huge, enormous, creepy building in front of me. So the effect here is we can't actually see each other. So we're going to talk directly to the audience and make sure that we don't look at each other to keep the illusion alive. Oh, I'm going to stick with the torch. Are you going to stick with the torch? Yes, yes. I'm going to keep we're my We're going torch. to hold our yep. torch. As I walked along, along what I thought was a long, long corridor, all I could feel was the cold sweat dripping down the back of my neck, and in my head, pictures of spiders and scorpions. I, I felt like I couldn't breathe, and suddenly I looked up and there it was, this, this huge, abandoned, creepy building. Even shining my torch ahead of me. All I could see was endless, endless darkness. Goodness only knows what could be in that darkness. I kept reaching my hand out in front of me, hoping to find a wall. I wanted to get closer to it, but I felt like there were bugs all over the floor, so I made sure I walked really slowly, and I felt every step that I took. And then it happened. My torch went out. So now we're going to look at uh, splitting the stage in three ways. A little bit more modern, uh, using phones uh, to create the idea of suspense and a story coming up. So Alex, Camille and Morgan, they're all in separate locations. Where are you, Alex? I'm in the kitchen. You're in the kitchen. So we're going to see some aspect of mine mm -hmm. that you're doing something in the kitchen. Camille, where are you? Getting ready to go for a walk. You're getting ready to go for a walk, so you might be putting on your boots or you brushing your teeth, you know, doing your hair, whatever we do when we uh, prepare to go for a walk, depending on the weather. And Morgan is? Uh, in my bedroom. Great. So you're going to do a three-way phone call, split stage, not looking at each other, uh, to organise, well, let's see. Three, two, one, action. Hello? Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm great. Have you got any plans for your um, birthday tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I have actually. I was looking at these escape room tours in a place called Darkwood Manor. It's some really old, ancient mansion. Um, but yeah, I was wondering if you wanted to come. Um, yeah, it sounds great. Have you asked Camille? No, actually. Do you want to add her to the call? Okay, sure. Hey, Camille. Hi, Morgan. Hey, Camille. Hi, Alex. So, Alex had these um, great plans for her birthday tomorrow. We're going to some creepy escape room. Um, she wondered if you wanted to come. Um, yeah, sure, why not? Okay, great. Cool, that sounds amazing. It's at 12.30. Don't be late, guys. Okay, see you then. And okay. it's coming to the end of that scene. So now we know where they're going, we know what they're going to be doing, and we've shown you how you could narrate the story as you arrive there, even if there's two of you. One on one side and on the other, if there's three of you, uh, or even if you're on your own, you could have a go at just narrating your story and telling the audience what's going on whilst presenting some action and some mime. And that will get you way ahead in your drama at Harrow High School. Well done, guys. Looking forward to meeting you.